All right, what's up, everybody? We're back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Hope you guys are having a good one. Today, we have episode two of season two of the Look In series, a series where at the end of the season, I go through all 30 teams to talk about what happened this season, their future, and things like that. We did episode one on the Detroit Pistons earlier. If you want to go back and watch that, it's on the channel. But now we have episode two. This one is going to be on the Washington Wizards. A lot to talk about here. Uh, thank you guys for the views on the videos and the shorts recently. I really appreciate it. If you do like the content around here, consider subscribing, like, turn notifications, do all stuff like that. I'd really appreciate it. It really upset a lot. Uh, join the membership. If you want to learn more about the membership, there's a video on my channel explaining all of it. You can go back and watch that. Link to my Twitter, TikTok, stuff like that in the description down below. And uh, yeah, don't waste any more of your time. Let's get right into it. The Washington Wizards this year. Uh, currently, they have not played their final game yet, but they are 15 and 66. Most likely going to be 15 and 67, maybe 16 and 66. Who knows? But they are very bad this year. This is the worst record in franchise history for the Wizards, um, surpassing 2001 and 2009, where they each year they lost 63 games. But yeah, 15 and 66, they're going to have the worst record in team history. Uh, yeah, things were not great. Looking at all their stats, all their stuff, their defense was horrible. Offense wasn't that great either. We didn't have a lot of expectations coming into this season for Washington. Honestly, coming into the year, we expect them to be a pretty bad team. Maybe be fun at some points with the players they have, but they were just straight up bad. Like, it honestly kind of blows my mind a little bit that they weren't the worst team in the NBA this season because they looked like it a lot throughout the year. But there was a team worse, which we already talked about. But Washington, yeah, very, very bad year. But honestly, they kind of needed this bad year. Look at the last couple years of the Wizards. They're always just mid, you know? Like, they haven't been that bad since 2013. They've been 44 wins, 46 wins, 41 wins, 49 wins, 43, 32, 25, 34, 35, 35 the past two years. So they were never a horrible at the bottom of the conference bad, but they were also never top of the conference good. They always were just around the middle, which is fine for a couple years, but after it got to, like, 2018, it was like, okay, you guys have won 40 games in a row. Or if you guys have won 40 games in a season five years in a row, it's time to either take a step up or, if it's not working, let's take a step back. You know, And the Wizards weren't doing that. They were always just trying to stay average, get in the play-in, maybe be an eight seed. But it wasn't working for Washington. They finally made the Bradley Beal trade. Um, they bought into the rebuild, and now they finally are at the bottom of the conference um, and, yeah, are going to finish with one of the worst records in the NBA. Uh, for Washington, some good things they had this year. Kyle Kuzma. Kyle Kuzma, they paid a lot of money in the offseason for to keep him around. And this year, he averaged 22 points, 6 rebounds, 4 assists. Uh, career season for him in terms of points, assist, uh, shooting from the field. Shot 46% from the field, 33% from the field, 77% from the field line. He by far was the best player on the Washington Wizards. Um, and now, looking at him... Uh, I thought he, I was hoping that he potentially could be a trade candidate at the deadline, but apparently it came out that he wanted to stay in Washington, which that's an interesting decision. But maybe, who knows, if Kyle Kuzma on this team next year and the year after, I don't know. Uh, looking at his contract, he just signed it, so he still has, after this year, three years left on his deal that is descending in terms of money, which is a good thing for Washington. So maybe. I won't be surprised if maybe he gets traded this offseason. I would like it a whole lot because I really do think Kyle Kuzma is going to be a really impactful player on a good team. You know, so we'll see how Kyle Kuzma. Um, they have other good players that I honestly really like. Danny Avdia took a big jump this year. Coming into the season, I was a believer that Danny Avdia was going to have a really big season. And he did. He did more than even I expected. He averaged 14, 7, almost 4 assists. He shot 51% from the field, 37% from 3, 73% from the free throw line. And he's still only 23 years old, so maybe that's a building block the Wizards can keep around for the future. A guy that can handle the ball, can defend very well, rebounds the ball really well for his size. And now if he can consistently knock down the 3, he'll be nice. Corey Kispar, I feel like, had a really good season as well. He averaged 13 points, shot 48% from the field, 38% from 3. He's a sniper. If he can keep going, that would be big. Um, I really like their rookie, Bilal Kolobali. I think he's got a bright future. Uh, the stats don't jump off the page. Um, he averaged 8 points, 4 rebounds, and assists. He shot 43% from, uh, from the field, 34% from 3, 70% from the field line. The 3-point shot was a lot better than I expected. 
Is he an amazing three-point shooter yet? No. But the three-point shot was a lot better, and he's a lot more confident taking them than I expected. And defensively, he's going to be really good, and he's still only 19 years old. So he's go he's going to be – that's something for the future for Washington. I think they might have something there. Um, after that, I don't really know. Like, they've had some guys like Jared Butler – who got a real contract now. He has some solid moments in there. You know, they have Patrick Baldwin Jr., who they got in the Jordan Poole trade. That thing could be solid. You know, um, Tristan Vucevic, who they brought over, their second-round pick from the last draft. Uh, he played in 10 games. He averaged 8 points, 3 rebounds. He shot 43% from the field. He has some big moments at the 4 and 5, so I think maybe they have something there with him as well. Um, so they have a little bit of things going on. You know, I have... I think they have some solid young players that maybe not be stars, but are good pieces so that when you get a star, maybe they can, you know, build with them. You know, or they might have to star in Bilal Kolobali. Who knows? I think bilal has got a lot of potential in there. Uh, but there's also still a lot that we don't know about this Wizards future. And one big thing is Jordan Poole. Um, they went out in the offseason. After trading Bradley Beal, acquiring Chris Paul, they flipped Chris Paul to grow grab Jordan Poole, who was on a big contract. His time with the Warriors was up seemingly with him and the whole Draymond incident. And we expected, the expectations coming in this year for Jordan Poole was he's going to explode. Kind of like he was going to average a lot of points and won't be efficient and won't be pretty. But a lot, a lot of people were expecting him to have a 23 point per game, like that type of season. And that never really happened. Uh, Jordan Poole did not have a good year. Uh, statistically, doesn't look that bad. Second half of the season, he looked a lot better. Overall in the year, he averaged 17 points, 2 rebounds, 4 assists, a steal. Uh, shot 41% for the field, 32% from 3. Uh, over almost 2.5 turnovers per game. Things were not great. Uh, especially early on in the year. Just had a lot of bad shooting performances. Um, couldn't really find a consistent rhythm overall. Like had some games where he was just flat out. Just you didn't really know he was out there on the court. And when he was out in the court, he was just either shooting the ball or turning the ball over. Or making a lot of weird, bad plays, slipping all over the court. Like, things were not great for Jordan Poole, you know. And the good thing is that the second half of the year, after he started coming off the bench, he got a little bit more, you know, accustomed to his role. And the second half of the year, after coming off the bench, he played 26 games. 14 of them were only off the bench because the last couple games of the year, they just put him out there. He averaged 21, almost 6 assists, uh, 43% from the field, 36% from 3. You know, not again, not really efficient, but he looked a lot more confident and had a lot of big scoring nights. He had, what, like five or six 30 point games after that? How, what is he in this Wizards future? He was brought in as a young guy that has some moments with the Wizards, showed some potential, was a big part of a championship run, you know, and one of the more exciting young players in the league. And this year, he didn't show any of that, you know. So really, it's kind of like, what is Jordan Poole's ro role on this team going forward? You know, and personally for me, I think the six man role is probably where it's going to be best. And honestly, for me, um, I I actually was waiting for, to do this video so I could talk about this because I have this thought about Jordan Poole. I think we maybe overestimated Jordan Poole a little bit too much. Maybe we put a label on Jordan Poole a little bit too early. He had the big run in 2022 when they won a championship. He showed a lot of nice things. And we were like, oh, shoot, this guy, potential, you know, future star, future all star. And the Wizards dynasty is going to, or the Warriors dynasty is going to keep going. And the Warriors believed in that too because they paid him a lot of money. At 22 years old, I mean, who wouldn't? And then last year, he had the old Draymond incident. Statistically, he had his best season, but. Watching him on the court, you definitely could tell, okay, something's not, this isn't the same guy from 2022. And then he goes to Washington, and it's like, all right, then go to Washington, he kind of spread his wings. He doesn't have Steph or Clay there. He could just do what he wants. And that didn't look good either. So now it's like, okay, wait, what, how do we get the best out of Jordan Poole? Personally, I think we might have overestimated him a little bit too early. You know, at 22 years old, having being a big part of a championship team, showing the dynamic plays he could have he could make scoring, playmaking, and stuff like that. How high he can get in a, in a hurry. Maybe we put the all, future star, future all star label on him a little bit too early. You know, maybe his role was to be more of a scorer six man. I think that's where his game 
looks the best. Because you see it this year, when he's the main guy, things don't look good. And you're not going to win games with Jordan Poole as your main guy. You know, and now we look back on it, and maybe the Warriors had the plan for Jordan Poole. Have him behind Stephen Clay, have him as a bench player, as a six man on a good team with structure around him. And that's where he looked the best. He can come in in the not crazy minutes that he's going to play when not with the ball in his hands, not as much, and not as big of a role or need to, you know, play really good and come in in little spurts. And make things happen. And score quickly. You know, maybe that was what Jordan Poole's role was supposed to be all along. He was never supposed to be a superstar or an all-star, number one, or even number two on a team. You know, he needed to be behind some guys. He needed to have structure, you know, to have it. Because you see this year, when he didn't have structure, he didn't look good at all. So maybe him coming off the bench and not being a focal point of a team is what Jordan Poole's role was supposed to be all along. And maybe Washington found it when they put him on the bench and he played a lot better. You know, I think that's what Jordan Poole's role really should be. Now, the money is one of the reasons why that might not be able to be his role and why it's going to look very bad. Because look at the salary. Uh, this year he's getting paid 20, he got paid 27.4 mil. He's getting 29 million next year. 31 million in 2026 and 34 million in 2027. So, if he's going to be a six man, he's getting paid 30 million dollars to be a six man. Just is is crazy. But that might just have to be what the Wizards do. Or if he's not a part of the Wizards any longer and he does go somewhere else and they someone you know believes in him and takes him on, which doesn't look likely. They're going to have to pay him a lot of money to be a six-man. Because I feel like, personally, that's what Jordan Poole's role is going to be. He's going to be a six-man. I think that's what his game is best at. Now, maybe this end-of-the-year streak brings some confidence to that next year. If he gets back into the starting lineup and back to a bigger role, maybe things can look bright for him, which I hope it does. Because, again, when he is gone, he's one of the most fun players and could be electric. But it's just we didn't see that this year. So maybe the Wizards found Jordan Poole's role, and that is a six-man. But we just kind of put the label on him as future all-star and, gave him, and did all this too early. Which, I don't really blame the Warriors for doing that. Because, I mean, at 22 years old, you do what Jordan Poole did and win a championship out of it. You know, and the way he did it, like, you know, who, who wouldn't have thought that Jordan Poole was going to be a really good player and could do more with a bigger role? You know what I mean? So I can't really blame the Warriors for that. But maybe we did too early. Um, another thing that Wizards are going to have to address this offseason is the coaching search. Wes Unseld, who was the coach for the past couple of years, stepped down. He's going to be in front office role. They gave the job to Brian Keefe, who went 8-30. and 30. Is he going to be the coach of the future of this team? I don't really know. But the coaching search for this Wizards team is going to be something that the Wizards are going to have to address and find. Um, do they bring in a young coach with no experience? I don't really know. With this team, maybe they bring in an older veteran guy that maybe has done it once or twice like a Kenny Atkinson type of guy. I don't I don't mean Kenny Atkinson like specifically, but maybe someone similar in that mold where he already had a coaching job, so older guy that hasn't really gotten that many chances that can come in and kind of corral this team in because that's what this team really is. When you watch this team, it just looked like they didn't really have much. It just looked like they just said, all right, go ahead, go play. You know, kind of like what the Rockets were the last couple of years. Like they just went out there and just did whatever. You know, like no real structure or game plan or real plays called or anything. It's just like, all right, uh, Kyle, Jordan, Denny, uh, okay, go. <laughs> you know, that's really what it was, and it did not look all good. But now we look to the off season, where, one, they have the coaching search. Um, looking at the NBA draft, potentially, uh, they do have their own first-round pick, which looks like it's going to be, you know, in the top four. They pretend, Right now they're projected the number two overall pick, you know, which looking at the draft – I think the Wizards are in a spot where it's really tough in the draft for them because I think more than any team in the NBA right now, they're like one of the only teams that doesn't have a future star. Like even the Pistons have Katie Cunningham. The Jazz have Laurie Markkinen, I guess. Charlotte's got LaMelo and Brandon Miller. Portland's got Scoot. You know, Anthony Simon, Shaden Sharp. San Antonio has Wemby. Toronto has Scotty Barnes. You know, like, you look around all these teams, mostly every team has a poor guy, a core future star 
that's like, all right, he's the one A. He's going to be the guy. Washington is one of the few teams that doesn't have that. Like, Kyle Kuzma's really good, but is he a number one on a good team? No. You know, no. no. Jordan Poole, not, no. But I'll call the Bali. I think he could be good. But is, is he a future star? Not. I don't think I could put that on him yet. So I, Washington does not have a future star. Now, the unfortunate thing is, the year they decide to tank, this draft coming up, if you know anything about it, is quote-unquote a bad draft to people because this draft doesn't have that. This draft does not have the the Wembys, the Anthony Edwards, the Zion. They don't have the guy that's like, all right, he's going to be a star. It, I like that this draft has a lot of good players, guys I think could come in and fit in roles and guys that can be really good players. But this draft right now, looking at it right now, doesn't have – future superstar level players which Washington desperately kind of needs so Washington picked a bad year <laughs> to really go in all in on the tanking but that doesn't mean they still can't get good players like if I think if they can still get Alex Saar that's a W for them you know maybe do they go after and take a risk on a guy like Rob Dillingham potentially out of Kentucky a freshman that can go in and do their things you know do they go in on Nikola Topic? You know, do they take a risk and go for a guy like maybe Buzelis or Kobe, Cody Williams or something? I don't know. Um, yeah, it's a very weird draft for Washington, especially if they if they end up with number one. I think they take Alex. They have to take Alex Starr because he's just Washington right now. Just needs the best talent available. That's what Washington needs: the best talent available. You know, they don't need to draft for fit or anything like that. They don't need to draft. They need the best talent available at that point. Right now, if the Pistons do get number one and take Alex Sar, do they take Zachary or Seicher? Do they take him? Maybe, but I could see some other arguments. Maybe for a Topic, maybe for a Rob Dillingham. You know, Rob Dillingham is a scorer, and at least he's going to, you know, bring some fans in potentially because <laughs> the way his game is, you know. Do they take a risk on Stefan Castle out of UConn? I think he's good, but I don't know if I'm the Wizards. I take that risk right now you know so the washington's in a weird place with that pick they also have gonna have another first round pick late um from that clippers because it's a pick apparently they have the second worst of is, is a weird protection on the pick but they're gonna have another late first round pick right now it's projected at about 26 which they can find another good guy down there as well um maybe they could take a risk on a guy like kai Ky- george out of miami that has been a guy rising you know, maybe they take a risk on like a Johnny Furphy from Kansas or, you know, somewhat Jerry. I don't think Jeremy Kane's going to be that low. But yeah, maybe they take a risk on like maybe like a Bub Carrington, you know, someone that potentially could pop a little bit. You know what I mean? So that, and then they also have a second round pick via the Phoenix Suns from the Bradley Beal trade. That's going to be about the f- like 50 something pick or whatever. So, you know. The Wizards have picks. That's a good thing. They have picks. They can make them. Unfortunately, it's just maybe not the draft to find what they're finding. You know, but I think they can still have a good draft. And then we go to free agency. They have a couple free agents. Um, Taj Jones is going to be an unrestricted free agent. I don't think he's going to come back. You know, he had a chance to start and he was good, but I think his role is better off the bench. Uh, Tristan Vukcevic has a team option who they're probably going to bring back. Anthony Gill is an unrestricted free agent. Who cares if they bring him back, honestly? Jules Bernard, who cares? Uh, Rashawn Holmes has a $12.8 million player option. That, let's be honest, he's taken because who's paying Rashawn Holmes $13 million? Not me. But looking at the Wizards' salary cap, they actually do not have a lot of money coming up. You know, they're actually looking at projected cap space, according to Spotrack. They have negative $50 million protected, projected cap space. And I was looking, I was like, dang, really? They have that low? But then you got to remember. This is next year's salary for the Wizards. Next year's on the book salary. Jordan Poole is getting paid twenty nine point six million dollars. Kyle Kuzma is going to get twenty three and a half mil. Marvin Bagley's on the last year of his contract, which is worth twelve and a half mil. Then you have Diaz's new contract kicks in, which starts at fifteen point six mil and then descends. That already right there, those four players are eighty one million dollars, <laughs> right there. And then you add in Nandre Shamit has eleven million dollars next year. Now it's not guaranteed. It's not a guaranteed deal. So. They could trade or cut him. And then Rashawn Holmes has a $12.8 million player option. If all those guys stay in the team, that's over $100 million right there. 
That's over $100 million for a team that's not going to win any more than 22 games. <laughs> so, yeah. They're not they're a bad team that also has a lot of money tied in. So, not the best position to be in in Washington. But I don't think their future looks as horrible, I feel like, personally. You know, it's not great. But it doesn't look as horrible. They have some players like Danny Avdia, like Corey Kispert, like Bilal Kolobali, who could be things. They have a guy in Kyle Kuzo right now that they can you know, kind of bring the fans in, I guess, and can still be a little bit, well, competitive is not the right word, but they can still be okay-ish. Jordan Poole, they have a young guy they took a swing on. you know. And the good thing is, it's not like they're going to have to pay anybody anytime soon anyway. It's not like nobody's coming to Washington. So they could kind of eat that Jordan Poole money a little bit and see if they can... You know, kind of develop him back into what he used to be. They have their own first-round picks. They have two first-round picks this year. So the the Wizards' future does not look as horrible, I feel like, as if we look at it, if we look at it in depth. The Wizards' future does not look as horrible. Um, it's still not great. They're still going to be a very bad team for the next couple of years. You know, I don't see this Wizards team come climbing out of this hole anytime soon. But I think this might be the best thing for the Wizards is to be bad so that they can build their team up and kind of just restart. That's what the Wizards really needed. They just needed a restart, refresh, bring in some new people, new coaches, new everything, and let's just start over. And that's what they're doing. And this is what it's going to be like for the next couple of years in Washington. You know? And am I looking forward to it? I don't know. I guess only time will tell. But yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, enjoyed the content around here. Consider subscribing. Like turn notifications do all stuff like that i'd really appreciate it really upset a lot uh go back and watch the last looking video and be on the lookout for more looking videos coming the next couple of days it's going to be two a day for the next few days so the content is really going to be pumping out here and uh yeah i'll see you guys tomorrow <laughs>